Good morning. Well, good afternoon now, I guess. Thank you all, all, for being here with us. You want me closer? Is that what you're telling me, Scott? Okay, everybody needs to be close to the mic. Okay, um, so we are, um, we've been working to coordinate this as quickly as we could for all of you. So I'm going to get out of the way and let the folks who have the good information about our great news um, give that to you. So first it will be our County Executive, Calvin Ball. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Sherry. Good afternoon and thank you all for joining us today. Yesterday, Ellicott City resident David Crawford was arrested on multiple arson charges for a series of fires set across multiple jurisdictions in Maryland. We're incredibly grateful to the many county and state authorities who worked together on this investigation of 12 fires since 2011 through 2020. Today, joining us are representatives from neighboring jurisdictions, Prince George's County, Montgomery County, Frederick County, Deputy Chief of Maryland State Fire Marshal's Office, as well as our Howard County Police and Fire Chief, who will detail what transpired. Not only were these homes and residents' lives but those lives who were put in danger also included our first responders, police officers, firefighters, those who run in when others run out. Again, thank you to all who were involved in this investigation. You have stopped potential future tragedies. We're one step closer to holding those accountable and providing some closure on these crimes that have spanned approximately a decade. I'll now turn it over to Howard County Police Chief, Lisa Myers. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity to commend the outstanding collaborative efforts between the representatives of police, fire, and state agencies in Maryland for helping to assist in the arrest of a serial arsonist who was linked to fire crimes throughout multiple jurisdictions in our state. Yesterday, arrest warrants for David Crawford were granted through various jurisdictions and at 11.45 a.m., he was arrested in Howard County, where he is a resident. This effort was the result of a multi-jurisdictional investigation. Many of the investigators here were on scene yesterday during Crawford's arrest. This afternoon, I can announce that after his bail hearing, David Crawford is being held without bond. Soon you will hear about the unfolding investigation and the collaboration between many detectives and investigators who were instrumental in taking this dangerous criminal from our community. Once again, I'd like to thank all of our partner agencies for their willingness to work together with the Howard County Police Department to keep the citizens of Maryland safe. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Next, we'll call to the podium Prince George's County Fire Chief Tiffany Green. Good morning. I'm extremely proud to stand here today for the efforts done by Prince George's County Fire and EMS Department's Arson Task Force and the surrounding jurisdictions investigators. As you will hear, this is a very complex case. It extended over a decade and involved multiple counties. As a result of their collaboration, communication, um, we were able to now get to where we are today. This case started in 2011 in Prince George's County, but again, the work of our investigators working together across multiple jurisdictions brings us to closure today. We're able to go back to our communities and our counties and let them know that this threat no longer exists. 
And for that, I'm extremely thankful. Thank you. Next is Howard County Fire Chief Bill Anashevsky. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Over the period of 2017 and 2018, Howard County Fire and Rescue responded to several suspicious fires related to this case. Two of these fires involving the same residents. All the house fires jointly investigated by Fire and Rescue and the Howard County Police investigators were found to be incendiary in nature, meaning there was no accidental sources were found in the area of origin during the investigation. While there were no reported injuries to either residents or fire department personnel as a result of these fires, considering the time of day, the very nature that the fires were set, the outcome could have been very different. Thankfully, all the residents in the homes were alerted and able to escape without harm. And as you've heard, this suspect is reported to be involved in arson fires across multiple jurisdictions spanning many years. I am thankful for the joint efforts of all of our regional partners and their work to take this suspect off the street. The sheer nature in which these acts are reported, combined with the previous position of such high public trust that was held by this suspect, is disturbing. While I will not speak on behalf of my counterparts regarding the specifics of this case, or their respective involvement, I am comfortable in saying that we all jointly respect the public trust bestowed upon us by our citizens as your public safety leaders. And we are all here in service to others. Thank you. Montgomery County Fire Chief Scott Goldstein. In addition to the words outlined by Bill and Tiffany about the great work done by our joint investigators, this process, this case, and this suspect could not have been identified without the assistance of the residents in the communities, the neighbors to these incidences. Information they provided, tips that they provided, allowed these, this investigative team to pinpoint and hone in on the suspect that has now been detained. As we talk about the excellent work done by this team, we need to also say thank you to the community, the residents, and for their assistance in providing us this critical information, and as our job is to provide a safe environment for our community and our residents, we want to ensure that those can, folks can go to bed tonight and future nights knowing that this gentleman is in custody and appreciate their cooperation. Next, we'll hear from Frederick County Fire Chief Tom Coe. Good afternoon. At approximately 3.40 a.m. on April 3rd, 2018, a passerby noticed a house on fire on the 2300 block of Gaplin Road in the Jefferson area of Frederick County. The passerby alerted the sleeping occupants of the home and activated 911. The fire department units arrived to find a small fire on the exterior at the base of the garage and extinguished the flames. The fact that the fire started on the outside of the home while the occupants were sleeping could have set the stage for a catastrophic outcome. Fortunately, the quick recognition of the fire by the citizen driving by the home allowed the occupants to safely exit their residence. The Frederick County Fire Investigation Task Force comprised of members of the Frederick County Fire Marshal's Office and the Frederick County Sheriff's Office conducted a thorough investigation. The task force worked with our regional partners to conclude that the cause of the fire was incendiary in nature. On behalf of Frederick County, I would like to share my gratitude with our regional partners who have worked seamlessly to coordinate the efforts in successfully bringing the suspect of these cases into custody.
Next, I'm going to introduce you to some of our investigators. You may not have their names um, in writing, so I'm going to introduce them and then ask each of them as they come to the microphone to provide their correct title or rank and agency and also give you the correct spelling of each of their names. Um, first is Battalion Chief Sajahan Jagtiani. Good afternoon, uh, Battalion Chief Sajahan, S-H-A-J-A-H-A-N, Jagtiani, J-A-G-T-I-A-N-I. -I. And what I'm gonna do is uh, kind of give you the, the break in, what, in the case that kind of brought this collaborative effort together. Um, in early of March, 2019, in the 5800 block of Mabel Terrace in Laurel, Maryland, uh, there was a house fire. The fire investigation unit from Prince George County Fire and Mess Department, along with the Prince George County Police Arson Task Force, uh, was sent there to, uh, to determine the cause. We determined that cause to be incendiary. Through investigative leads and efforts, all, their, all of our leads were, uh, were nothing. We decided on public assistance in which we um, sent the video to the uh, to local media. Early in 2020, investigators from Montgomery County Fire and Rescue, uh, Fire and Explosive Investigative Unit witnessed that video. And that collaboration began there. After that, culminated here and the arrest with uh, of David Crawford. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Prince George's Police Department Detective Thomas Smith, which maybe is an easier spell, um, and I'll welcome him to the podium. Hi, that's uh, Smith, S-M-I-T-H. Um, in Prince George's County, uh, I am a police detective and I work full time on the arson task force with the fire EMS department. There are four of us officers that work full time with them. And so when I began assisting in this investigation, uh, I had to learn a lot about Laurel, Maryland, as I'm not from there. And as I began my investigation, I learned that there were other fires um, that seemed like they may be related uh, to this first fire I began to investigate on Maple Terrace. And as I continued my investigation, uh, we linked a few different uh, incidents together, including the one in Frederick County, Maryland. And then um, we, we didn't really get very far after that. So we decided to release the video of the suspect uh, committing the crime to the media and to the public. Uh, to see if we might get some assistance in maybe identifying the suspect or something. Um, a short time after that, um, Lieutenant Moe from Montgomery County Fire and Explosives Investigation uh, figured out um, this suspect looked strikingly similar to his suspect uh, that he had in a fire uh, in Montgomery County, which he can talk about. Um, after we realized we may be looking at the same suspect, we began to meet and go over our cases and share information. And then as, um, as that uh, continued to go on, uh, the case just expanded uh, larger and larger, obviously to all the other jurisdictions affected. Um, so I guess with that, I'll let uh, Lieutenant Mo explain uh, his portion. Okay, Montgomery County Fire Department Fire Explosives Unit, Lieutenant Christopher Moe. Good afternoon, uh, Christopher, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R. My last name is Moe, M-O-E. Um, as Battalion Chief and uh, <coughs> Detective Smith said, um, this all came together based on uh, a fire that we had in 2016 in Clarksburg. Uh, that was September of 2016. Uh, September of 2017 had a fire at the same exact house. Um, to me and the, the rest of the investigators from Montgomery County, it looked uh, to be the sort of the same MO. Uh, it was done the same way. Um, and, and a lot of things um, pointed to the same person being involved. Um, some time went by and we worked both of those fires for, uh, for several years and we didn't get very far. Um, 
as Detective Smith said, somewhere around uh, early 2020, well, I guess late 2019, they put out a video. I didn't happen to see that video until uh, early 2020. I happened to stumble across it. And when I saw that video, I said to myself, that surely looks exactly like the person in my video from the 2017 fire. And I believe it was probably 9.30 or so at night. Uh, and I reached out to Detective Smith and almost immediately he sent me a text message back and said, I'll call you tomorrow. I think we need to put our heads together. Um, he and I met the next day and um, we felt like uh, we were probably looking at the same suspect for both of our fires. Uh, we started to discover some similarities between uh, all of the cases and that kind of drove us into uh, reaching out to a couple of detectives in Frederick County um, who were instrumental in helping us in this and also some uh, investigators and detectives from uh, Howard County and we kind of at that point developed this uh, sort of task force where we all worked collaboratively uh, pretty much on a daily basis. Um, I'll let the uh, lieutenant from Howard County elaborate on that. Next is Lieutenant Jason Luckenbaugh, and he is the Property Crimes Division Commander at the Howard County Police Department. Thanks, Sherry. Good afternoon. My name is Jason Luckenbaugh, J-A-S-O-N. L-U-C-K-E-N-B-A-U-G-H. I'm the commander of the Property Crimes Division, which oversees the Arson Investigations Unit and in collaboration with the Fire Investigations Unit with the Howard County Fire and Rescue. In December 2020, Howard County investigators within the Fire Investigations Unit, which is a collaborative team-based approach between the Police Department and Department of Fire and Rescue, were contacted by Montgomery County and Prince George's County Fire Investigators. As pre previously noted, a collective effort between Montgomery County, Prince George's County had already been undertaken to investigate our suspect. Information was shared that Crawford resided in Ellicott City and there may be connections with him to fires in Howard County. Howard County began collaboration to assist in the execution of the search warrant at the suspect's residence on January 5th. A large amount of digital evidence was then processed and analyzed, and along with many other investigative aspects, methods of operation, and such, Crawford was identified as likely linked to five fires within Howard County. Of note, one car fire on Country Lane in Ellicott City in March of 2017, linked to the victim through the court-appointed special advocate program, one inhabited house fire on Avalon Drive in Elkridge in two, June of 2017, linked to victims through chiropractic appointments. Three fires at Spring Meadow Drive in Ellicott City. One inhabited house fire in December of 2017 at that location. One malicious burning of the lawn in two, August of 2018. And a final house fire in September of 2018. These were all linked to the victims through membership in local community associations and partnerships in Howard County Schools. On March 3, 2021, investigators from multiple jurisdictions, including the Howard County Police Department and the Fire Investigations Unit with the Fire Department, initiated charges against Mr. Crawford and served arrest warrants on him at his home in Ellicott City. He was then transported to our Southern District and then transported to our Howard County Central Booking in Jessup, where he was served with his arrest warrants. I do want to point out the significant dangers that Crawford placed on the victims, responding firefighters, police, and other emergency services in each of these fires. Lastly, I'd like to thank the collaborative effort of the joint FIU of the Police Department and Fire Department, the partnership with the Howard County State's Attorney's Office, and namely the effort of this multi-jurisdiction county work group in bringing these cases all together. The gr group worked handily for months to investigate and jointly bring charges as placed yesterday. And they worked on a daily basis, sometimes at all hours of the day. The suspect was charged with 28 counts of different violations within Howard County, which were all served on him yesterday. Thank you very much.
And our final speaker before we open up for questions is Gregory Durr, the Chief Deputy um, from the State Fire Marshal's Office in the Department of the State Police. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Chief Gregory Durr, from Maryland State Fire Marshal's Office, Department of State Police. Uh, we are primary investigative bodies for fire and explosives for 17 out of the 23 counties in Maryland. Uh, we currently have an open case in Charles County right now that we are investigating. We are looking at similarities from that case uh, in, uh, involved with some of these other cases that we, we talked about earlier. Um, I would just like to also say I'd like to thank everybody for the collaborative effort for all the local jurisdictions uh, and for the public. Uh, as one of the chiefs says, we can't do our job unless people from the public come forward and help us. So we really appreciate the help from the public. Uh, I also want to give out a tip line. If there's any fires that anyone believes fit the similarities of the ones spoken of today, please call 1-800-492-7529 or TIPS. And that's the Maryland State Fire Marshal's Office. Thank you for your time. Okay, we're going to open up for questions. Um, here's how that's going to work. Um, I will, if you'll give me the luxury of a moment to repeat your question into the microphone so that the folks who are watching online with us right now can hear what you're asking. And then also bear with me as I turn around and try to identify which of these very qualified people is the right person to come to the podium to answer your particular question. So let's give it a go. Sorry. Yes. Uh, in court today, both the judge and the assistant state's attorney used the word terror and terrorize to describe the effect on victims. Could any of your uh, investigative colleagues uh, characterize that for us? Please. The question was that today in court, um, the, the, word, the use of the word terror and terrorize was used when describing what this suspect did to his victims. So I'm gonna turn this over to one of our investigators. Uh, again, Christopher Moe, M-O-E. Um, to, to your question, I think that has to do with the fact, the repetitive nature in a lot of these instances. Uh, um, you know, some of these victims were family members um, where he went back once or twice or sometimes even three times. Uh, as the lieutenant from Howard County spoke about um, the fires that occurred in Howard County, it, there was more than one at the same place. So I, I think that's probably what they're referring to. Yes. One, one of the other issues was dealing, I, I guess, motive. Is there, was this, uh, these people who were chosen, I guess, why were they chosen? What was the motive? The question is, what was the motive in each of these cases? Why were these particular people chosen as victims? All of the victims were known to the suspect. Nobody was a complete stranger that didn't know him. Uh, there are a lot of cases, so the motive in each one is probably a little bit different. And uh, some of that is still under investigation, so I can't really go into specifics for each, the motive in each case. There was a list, how would you characterize that list? Could you tell us about that please? Can you repeat the question? The question was, there was a list, and how would I characterize that list? Um, I don't know how I would characterize it other than I think that list is pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Do you know if any of the people on the list were people who he may have encountered as an officer? You're asking if any of the people on the list we believe may have encountered the suspect as when he was an officer. Sure, I'm Detective Thomas Smith with Prince George's County Police Department, uh, Arson Task Force. Um, the question was, uh, how, how did he know the victims? Were any of the victims people that he encountered while he was an officer? Were any of the victims people that he encountered when he was an officer? So, um, so civilians. civilians, not as a police officer, no. 
he did know them, but he's been retired as a police officer since 2010. So none of the victims were, you know, someone he encountered prior to that. And can you give us the nature Stick of uh, in his entrance. resignation? Because all of these fires started after his 2010 resignation. Do we know if any of this was retaliation for something that may have happened on the job? The question was, uh, do I know if his resignation in Laurel had anything to do with retaliation? Um, to that, I can't really speak to why he resigned from Laurel. Uh, I would probably direct you to them. Um, and again, the motive is still under investigation in some of the cases, so um, I couldn't really speak to that right now. Can you give us an idea of what the similarities are, what some of the similarities are with all of the victims? Because we're talking about Frederick County, all of these different areas. What was one of the main similarities between all of these people? I'd say, uh, so the question is, what are some of the similarities in the different cases? And um, as you probably know from the court documents, uh, he knows all of the different people. There, no one's a stranger. The time of day is always uh, pretty similar. Um, so it's at night uh, when people are home and asleep in their bed. You know, at three o'clock in the morning, most people are not awake. Um, and um, there's usually, um, you know, a set fire to their home. You know, it's. It usually wasn't a vehicle target. We do have a few cases that involved vehicles, but um, usually he set fire to their home. Could you, could you please talk about some of the unique evidence, for instance, uh, you know, Apple Health Monitor, which helped you put together movements, et cetera. Uh, that's going to be of interest to folks. Tell us a little bit about that, please. So the question was, could I talk about some of the um, electronic evidence that we had? Again, uh, we served a search warrant at the suspect's home in early January, and during that uh, search, we seized a large number of electronic items. As most people know, everyone has a cell phone now, everyone has a computer. You know, uh, electronics cover a large um, amount of our lives in these days. So, as an investigator going back and looking for information about a person's life and what they've been doing, um, that's one of the first things we want to look at uh, because we can go and retrieve some of those things and as you probably read in some of the court documents we have found um, items in those electronics uh, that lead us to believe that uh, the suspect committed these crimes on that point on that point i'm gonna ask your opinion i guess did he use his police knowledge to commit these or was it sloppy or per se Hey, Jennifer Donnellan, I'm the Director of Public Information and the Office of Community Relations for Prince George's County Fire EMS, D-O-N-E-L-A-N. Um, I just want to, you were asking about the, the police officer and his role as a law enforcement officer and whether that had played any role in terms of targeting his victims. You're, I think you're asking the same thing. No, I asked, did he use his police knowledge to, of, of how you commit crimes? Or, you know, to, to, so the, did he use that to, to do that? Did he seem like he was smarter than the average criminal? Well, he's locked up now, so um, I guess that didn't pay off. But if you read the, the, the probable cause, the statement of probable cause, it's about 17 pages long. It goes into detail about some of the things that they were able to glean from the search warrant. But in terms of his role as a uh, former police chief, former member of law enforcement, um, he did not utilize that position. And I want to make sure that we're clear. None of his victims were civilians with whom he had contact in a role as a member of law enforcement. Uh, the other victims, as you'll read in the press conference uh, in the press release and in the statement of charges those were people with whom he worked they weren't civilians with whom he dealt with say on a traffic stop or anything like that so I want to make sure that, that that we're clear on that and then in terms of whether or not his role as a law enforcement officer helped him come up with these different we'd, you'd have to ask him but obviously I think that the end answer and the conclusion is he's currently locked up ma'am you or, or someone or anybody uh, of a suspect lighting a house on fire in the middle of the night to Mr. Crawford. 
How are you able to connect those pieces? So the question is, um, we had multiple videos and that there were similarities, but ultimately how did we piece together, how did they piece together um, that all of them were committed by the same suspect? That, that they were crossing, yeah. That, that it was, yes. You can talk about that scene in the back. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Chris Moe, M-O-E. So, I, it's kind of a hard, yeah, I mean, you know, that's kind of a hard question to, to answer in a couple minutes. Um, we did have, like, 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 you know, we had video from uh, both my 2017 uh, fire that was never released to the public. That was only um, seen by investigators. And uh, like we mentioned before, that's what we used to compare to the video from the 2019 fire that happened in Laurel. Uh, when we put those two together, you know, that's, that's kind of what, it, what got us on the, the direction that um, we were dealing with the same person. In 2020, uh, November of 2020, we had a third fire uh, in Montgomery County in Clarksburg where we did recover some video surveillance from that fire as well. That was compared to all of the other videos. Um, and at that point, um, that's when this work group involving us, you know, all of us that are here today, Frederick County, Howard County, uh, Montgomery County, the State Fire Marshal's Office, everybody uh, together, that's where we all put our heads together um, and started looking at a whole bunch of other evidence that we had. Um, and, and in the end, that's how we came up with uh, Mr. Crawford. Could you describe the reaction, please, among investigators once it became clear that your primary suspect was a person with this staff? I'll let the lieutenant answer that one. <laughs> Could you repeat the question for me? Could you please describe the reaction on your team as it, it became clear that your main suspect was a, a high-profile former law enforcement officer? Sure. Uh, Jason Luckenball. I think any of these investigations, especially when they span so long and there's so much involved with them, when you have a suspect of a high profile, uh, even before that time, you're looking at pretty significant evidence that's going into it and concerns about who may be linked to it. When it comes down to someone of the public stature that he had, uh, it absolutely starts to tighten up the investigation. Uh, the reaction stays the same, the investigation stays in the same path, and we follow uh, where it takes us. And that's where we led to yesterday when we placed him under arrest. So. I don't think there was a change in reaction. I think it was more of a, it's time to really buckle down and make sure that we're following this investigation to the nth degree. Hi, uh, quick question on, we understand that he went to multiple locations and targeted certain people more than once, but can you speak to just the degree that he followed up on those crimes? Did he return to any of the homes? We saw some comments from online about one of the crimes, how he did, you know, monitored what was going on. So the question is, do we know if he returned to those, those fires and actually how was involved? How he was involved in monitoring after allegedly committing the event. So through the digital evidence, it definitely, uh, I'm sorry, the question is, uh, how did he track back the uh, investigation and how they were, he was linked to it, uh, as well as um, how he was tracking it? So through the digital evidence, it took us down a lot of paths. Um, to identify that he was actually doing research uh, on some of it, uh, on a lot of different facets. He was linked to these victims, as is noted in the charging document. Uh, and it's clear that there were definitely linkages, depending on whether they were committees that he served on with others or uh, other aspects in prior job life, et cetera. So there were definitely uh, there was definitely research done at some point on each of the victims by him. And so we're going to just take a couple more and then wrap it up. Had spoken to the importance of people coming forward with tips. Can you discuss how any of that may have turned the investigation more than I would actually defer to Montgomery and Prince George's on that. Come on down and show the time. And then you'll repeat it for them. <laughs>
Sure. Tips from the uh, the question is uh, how did tips from the community help in the investigation? And uh, I think it's important that uh, anytime we have a crime that we're investigating, that the community is aware and involved. We, I believe, probably each jurisdiction, including the state, has uh, some sort of arson tip line or anonymous way to report crimes, crime solvers, things of that nature. And those are obviously very important. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, the smallest um, thing could help us uh, understand what's going on and, and solve something. So, um, you know, when people call in arson tip lines or crime solver information, um, that's always helpful to investigators. And of course, um, I don't want to go into specific tips in this case, but um, there's n no, no information will hurt. We did follow up on a number of leads, um, specifically in Prince George's County. Um, and um, we thank the public for, uh, for giving us that information. Two more people. Do, uh, do investigators know about the allegations that he fired shots at a building while he was chief? And if so, why wasn't he prosecuted? Where are you talking about? Jennifer Donnell in Prince George's County Fire and EMS. So I was supposed to ask, do investigators know about allegations that he fired shots at a building while he was police chief? Do you know where? Okay, so what I can speak for is certainly for the, the jurisdictions behind you, we don't have any charges like that in our jurisdictions. Thanks. And one more question here. The question is, based on the evidence that was found in his home during the search warrant, did the investigators find anything that indicated that he may be preparing to commit another arson? Hi, Detective Thomas Smith. Uh, the question was, uh, did we find any evidence uh, in our digital searches that uh, the suspect had planned to commit any other crimes? And, um, you know, we are actually still going through some of that uh, material. So up to this point, um, we have found a lot of evidence that um, obviously you've read about that supports our case. And um, the rest of it is kind of still under investigation, so I can't really say. Um, much more about that, really. The question was uh, about the list uh, that was in the court documents and the information about the list that are that is in the court documents is is what we have in reference to the list. Okay. So we're going to wrap it up. So um. Thanks for being here. Great questions from all of you. If there were questions that we didn't get to, um, a lot of folks here have referenced the charging documents. And if you don't have those yet, they do have a lot of information. And also, um, the, um, I'm sorry, I'm seeing Yolanda back there, who is the person who has the charging documents. So, uh, and also, um, if you have any additional questions that you couldn't get answered here, you can contact me. I'm Sherry Llewellyn, Howard County Police PIO. Um, Jen Donnellan, who is with PG Fire. Um, Pete Perringer, who is the PIO with Montgomery County Fire. You guys all know how to find us, so we're available if you need anything going forward. Thank you all for being here.